uh, they had, this was done originally on a college campus. So they had male and female um, Confederates as they were called. This doesn't mean people from the South, but it's just members of the experimental team um, who were judged to be moderately attractive, walk up to members of the opposite sex on a college campus and say, hi, I've been noticing you around campus lately. I find you very attractive. Would you, and they asked them one of three questions. Would you go on a date with me? Uh, would you come back to my apartment with me? Would you have sex with me? And they simply recorded the percentage of individuals who agreed to these three different requests. And of the women approached, about 50% agreed to go out on a date with the guy, 6% agreed to go back to his apartment, and 0% agreed to have sex. Of course. Um, women typically needed a little more information about the guy. Of, of the men approached by the female confederate, also about 50% agreed to go on a date with her, 69% agreed to go back to her apartment, and 75% agreed to have sex with her. What the, like what, what's the, why, how did the, how, you're a man, how do you answer, yes, I'll just go back and have sex with you. Let's just well, start there. It, Let's it, start there. It's a great question. And well, first of all, um, uh, the qu one qualifier is that um, these Confederates were judged to be moderately attractive, but and equally, equally so. Um, for men, um, sexual opportunities are very rare. Now, it may not seem that way in the modern environment with Tinder and college campus hookups and everything, but historically, um, sexual opportunities were very rare. And even in the modern environment, so you go on um, Tinder, for example, and uh, or OkCupid is another dating site, and there's studies on a, just a rate how attractive members of the opposite sex are. And men rating women, it shows this normal bell, bell shape distribution where some women are very attractive, some women are not so attractive, and they're, you know, there's a large number in, kind of in the middle of a different range. You ask women how attractive men are, only about 20% make it up above threshold. Hmm. Um, and m most women find most men just to be below threshold <laughs> on attractiveness. And so mm -hmm. what that means is that men find women on average more attractive than women find men. Uh, and, so, um, and so these guys who are approached by a, a woman this has probably never happened to them in their life. I mean, who, of course, it happens to uh, movie stars. Or right, because it's a very boxers. small amount of men that are actually getting the action. Yeah. In the yeah. ranking of it all, because there's so many, so much criteria and so much judgment on if a woman wants to mate with that or have sex with him or connect with him. So there's just the pool is tiny of the men that are actually having sex with women. Right, right, exactly. And and it's gotten tinier in the sense that um, uh, the men who are having sex, let's say the top 20%, are having a lot of it. That right. is a, lot of it with a, a larger number of uh, women. Um, and then, in essence, mon monopolizing those, uh, uh, leaving a larger and larger share of men who are sexless. And, and and that's why you have these phenomena. Now the incel is an extreme example, um, but there's this pool of men who just um, uh, can't find women who uh, are attracted to them. And and this is where this gets back to our earlier discussion of the mating crisis, where um, these guys are spending all their time on uh, on watching pornography on social media. Uh, playing video games, uh, and so they're not interacting in real life. And how do you develop mating skills? You know, skills of attraction, skills of social interaction. So you actually have to meet people and interact in real life. And these guys are not doing that. And so there's this been a rise of um, anxiety, and I think it's actually anxiety of several different sorts. One is simply social anxiety, where men feel awkward and when they especially when they meet an attractive woman they don't know what to say what to talk about or they you know and they get kind of paralyzed with anxiety uh and so they tend people tend to avoid things that they're anxious about so it kind of has a vicious cycle yeah. um 
And then fear, second one is like a subset is men fear rejection. Yeah. And which is, um, you know, when they approach a woman, if they, and they fear being shot down um, for good reason, because they often are shot down. Um, uh, but the, um, the fear of rejection has this paradoxical quality where even though we're supposed to live in this sexually egalitarian world, 90% of women still expect the guy to make the first move. Right. Another and so, catch. And so they're expecting the guy to make the first move. He's paralyzed with anxiety and doesn't want to risk being shot down. Uh, and so they tend to avoid interacting with women. And so don't develop the kinds of mating skills that they need. Is monogamy completely natural? I get asked this question a lot. Are humans fundamentally monogamous or are we fundamentally polygynous or promiscuous or polyamorous? Right. Is marriage and mating just to do with now, like back in the old days with uh, keeping uh, family land in the land in the family or, you know, riches or things like that or, you know. The way I think about it is that we have humans have an evolved menu of mating strategies. We don't just have one long term mating, pair bonding and, mm. and attachment. Mm. And I think that is part of our mating strategy. So if you go to our closest primate relative, who's the chimpanzee, with whom we share more than 98% of our DNA, they don't have anything resembling a long-term mating strategy or a pair bonded mating strategy. They have the female comes into estrus, female chimp, males mate with that female when she's in estrus. She doesn't conceal it. She is a, get the bright red genital swellings and the olfactory cues. Uh, and then after she, the estrus phase, the males are indifferent and they don't interact much with the females anymore. Uh, and they don't, um, and they don't do anything for the offspring either. So, but in humans, you have these three things that have co-evolved. So you have one is the evolution of long-term pair bonds. Right. And it's one of the mating strategies amidst this menu. Two, you have relatively concealed ovulation. So compared to our chimps, you, men can't tell when women are uh, ovulating uh, or not. And a lot of women can't tell. Now, some women are very sensitive to their bodies in the modern environment. You, you can get that information. But three, you have the evolution of very high male parental investment. So in contrast to the male chimps, men do invest heavily in offspring. Not always, of course, we have deadbeat dads and guys who abandon their families and all that. But but compared to all other primate species, human males, men do invest uh, sometimes a couple of decades or more in their children. They protect them, they feed them, they provision them, they, they put a shelter over their heads, et cetera. Uh, and so, um, so, so, so we def definitely have long-term peer bonded mating. Now that doesn't necessarily mean monogamous mating because we also have short-term mating. We have a fair mating, infidelity, uh, as, I, as I mentioned. Uh, we have serial mating, which is very common in our species. So you mate with one person for a while, break up, and then mate with another person for a while, break up, and so forth. And, uh, and that's a very common pattern, especially in the modern environment. Um, and then we have people who mix and match. And then a, a small minority of people do polyamory. Um, and then historically, there's also been polygyny, which is one man, multiple wives. Mm. Uh, and that is um, against the law uh, in, this, in, in this country. But we have sometimes what you might call effective polygyny, you know, which is that top 20% of the men sometimes engage in you know, not necessarily simultaneous wives, but maybe one long-term mate after another, after another, after another. So an extreme example might be Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, who uh, I'm sure you've seen those charts where as he gets older, the age of his girlfriends stays the same. <laughs> yeah. Lucky him. I mean, George Clooney, I think, sort of did that for a while before he settled down to Right. what seems like a very happy long-term uh, marriage right so, what triggers that what triggers settling down to a happy long-term marriage mm -hmm. um 
I don't know. That's a great question. Um, I know one guy, and, and I don't know if this is a general answer, but his view is he, he's going to mate um, as much as he can with different women until his mate value uh, kind of plateaus. And then he's going to try to lock in a high mate. The best you can find. Woman. So, and I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you also have, a, I mean, another example of that in the Hollywood arena is Warren Beatty you know, who was a notorious um, ladies' man in his day, but then met uh, Annette Benning and, and settled down to, um, like, a, I don't know, 25-year, 30-year relationship with four kids and so forth. So probably good not to count on a guy in his 20s um, settling down, if he's in that top 20%. Oh, that is the catch right there. If he's in the top 20%, be careful of that because they have more options. And like Chris Rock said, you're only as loyal as your options. An exaggeration, but there's some truth to it as well. Uh, mm -hmm. That men who who can, who have the opportunity. Stuff, and that's why you get, um, I mean, that's why it becomes problematic for, you know, and I know, I mean, you've, your involvement in, in racing and the sports world and you're familiar with all that the the star athletes um and sports figures and rock stars i mean get, they get they get a huge amount of attention um from women you know i mean oh yeah the women definitely make it obvious for the men i can't say that from the other perspective being a female athlete the men don't make it as obvious to women i mean they can but i think it's much more it's a much more dangerous situation for a woman wanting one of those top 20% men who especially are elite level performers and celebrities to, to imagine that that's going to go well. If right, you want. Right. right. And, and, and the, you know, and the, and the problem is that it, it doesn't stop. So even after, uh, let's say, um, Leonardo DiCaprio, let's say he settles down and gets married. You know, does that mean that there are no longer going to be any women interested in him? Well, I think the women will continue to be interested in him. Um, so, uh, so, and that, 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 you know, offers a set of temptations that, you know, men are tempted to act on. Some do. And, and, but as we talked about earlier, some don't, you know, some don't want to jeopardize their relationship and choose not to act on those things. If you like this clip and you want to hear the whole episode, click at the bottom of your screen.